Hey everybody, welcome back to Ron Hill Gaming. We are in the game here at Breast Cancer Awareness Roleplay on the 5M servers. And this will be our second installment in the CAD tutorial program. We're using the uh, Sonoran uh, CAD system. So you should already have your permission key and um, have, have joined the, the, the proper... Um, community here all right so if you see this this will be your your display when you first open the program if you're seeing something where it needs you to to pick something then that means that you haven't been entered in yet and you just need to go through the steps to do that in the previous one now from here um again if you're going to be a civilian uh you just click civilian and be done with it um if you need to get your driver's license or your vehicle registered your dmv is where you need to go the law we're going to get into today, that's uh, court. And then, of course, I'm in the police. So I've already entered my permission key uh, before for supervisor because I am a sergeant. And you can see that at the top, I am now, it doesn't say, um, I forget what it said before, but it is clearly I'm part of the San Andreas State Police. Okay, so here's your screen when you first get it up. I mean, if you want to, Full screen it you most certainly can um, but more than likely you'll have something this size so that your game is going on behind it okay so either <clears throat> excuse me you will have the uh, overlay in the game or you'll have the separate uh, window here okay so today we're we've already gone through um, how to create a character and and as a review for the people uh, who might have missed it if you're in law enforcement and you want, this is this is primarily for law enforcement from this point on, okay? Civilians have done their job. They put themselves in the computer or in the system, and they've entered their vehicle and gotten their license and all that good stuff. Firearms and hunting is what, licenses as well. So we need to you know be able to look somebody up. It's down here. We're going to look them up, name, search. It'll tell us the records and so on. So that's a review from yesterday. So this is how you look up somebody. You want to do a plate search? It's right there. Plate search at the top. Okay. If uh, you know a different, if you're looking for a person, uh, a, a, excuse me, an officer, use your identifier. And a record ID would be the number of the report that we're looking for. Okay. So we're not interested in that. Go up to our red line there. We are going to do records today. So we're going to go down to records. And this is how we do reports. Um, you have files that you've created. We can search. New reports are adding in like accident reports or specific reports. You'll see if I click on that, it says no report type. Then uh, we add to admin. Okay, so this is more of an admin side of things. Okay. New record, that's what we want right there. Don't worry about supervisor panel unless you're a sergeant or above. <clears throat> you won't need to worry about that. So, new record. Um, let's say that we've arrested somebody. So, one of the more common things uh, that we do. So, we hit arrest. Were they armed? Were they violent? Were they mentally ill? Now, we're not psychiatrists, but obviously, if someone's acting strange or if they have a previous history, of mental illness, then we will click that. The top is our agency information. It's already filled in. In fact, I can't even change it. See that? It's it's burned in. I can't change it. Now the civilian information. Let's say that I know that, you know, Tony Wonder, friend Tony. Okay. I'm going to search Tony. Don't worry, Tony. I'm not going to save it. I'm clicking on Tony. It populates the whole thing. I don't have to type it all in. Okay. When, when Tony did that for his character, he saved us the trouble of having to do it again. Even put a phone number in there. Okay, so there's, there's Tony. Okay, And if I say, no, Tony's actually a female, I could change that here or change something along the lines because this is my report that I'm filling in. So if today if his hair is a different color, then I can do that. We need to add colors like red and green and blue, too, to that. Okay, so again, if something is different, we can change it. Is if Was he stopped in a vehicle? Is the vehicle pertinent? Okay, is it even part of the thing? Okay, well, there it is. And then our charges. So right here, 
Uh, adding charges, I believe, is how you add. Okay, it just goes right to this. So these are drop down menus. So right now we have two charges available to us, which is armed robbery and murder. Obviously, this database will be updated with every crime that uh, we would run into. But today we'll say that Tony is an armed robber. And one count of armed robbery and the bond type is a federal bail bonds. Now I can change that. Let's say that that we're going to say no bond or, or bail or that, you know, Tony's, you know, an illegal immigrant or something. We'd have an immigration bond here. It depends on the crime, of course. Um, surety bond would be like going to a bail bondsman. All right. Property bond is somebody put up their home. Okay. A federal bail bond is going to be cash to the government. And also a cash bail would be a cash to a, a bond ensures that you're there. A bail is cash to get you out that day. Okay. And then being released on your own recognizance. Okay. So, or, or with a notice to appear, a citation release, okay, you have a court date, released on your own recognizance, then bails and bonds, okay? So we're going to leave it as a federal bail bond because it was armed robbery. The jail time is anywhere from five to ten years. It is a felony. We have a drop down for felony, misdemeanor, infraction, or warning. The title code, these should be populated when we add in these charges. And then the bond or the fine amount, in this case, is twenty thousand dollars. Now there is a drop, or a, excuse me, a um, changer you know, to go up or down with that number, but we'll just leave it at that. Okay. Charge number two, you know, might be a weapons charge if we had those in there, or he might let's say he killed somebody. So now we have murder during an armed robbery. Okay. So all of those have been added. We're going to continue. Did he have any weapons? Well, he should have because of the murder and the armed robbery. So he had a pistol. Okay. Then we're going to go to arrest type. On view is something that we arrested on scene. Criminal summons is a notice to appear type of, a, 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 you know, a, a Court date, if you will. Uh, he had a criminal summons to appear in court. And then an order for arrest is a warrant. Um, or at least that's how I interpret these. Okay, so an order for arrest is a warrant. So he had a warrant for his arrest. We are ordered to arrest him. Okay? So in this case, we pulled up on scene. He was robbing the store. He shot the guy, and then we got him. So that's on the view. And then if I was a probationary officer, this is where my information would go. Okay? then the most important part of any report is your narrative. What happened? Dispatch to the scene of a silent alarm at the LTD at Grove Street. Upon arrival, we see the suspect inside um, holding a gun on the store clerk behind the counter. The store clerk made a move to the uh, register, and the suspect shot the suspect one time in the, in the head. Um, suspect died at the scene of his uh, wounds. Uh, or excuse me, uh, victim died of his scene of his wounds. Suspect then left the building where he was taken into custody without incident by arresting officer. Um, suspect was read his Miranda rights, um, at which time he said that he, was, he needed the money for, to feed his children. He didn't mean to kill the clerk. It was an accident. Uh, any of that stuff, suspect was taken to Mission Road Police Department where he was processed and turned over to the Department of Corrections for um, further booking. Okay? Something like that. So that's your narrative. If anybody gets a hold of this report and they read the narrative, they should have a clear visual picture of what took place during this incident. Um, if it isn't written down, it didn't happen. So if, if something is very, very pertinent, you want to make sure that you have put that in your narrative because later on, if you know, it goes to court or there's another situation um, and somebody says, hey, that wasn't in your report, why, is, why all of a sudden can you remember that now and it wasn't pertinent to put in your report at the time, you can see how that would uh, cloud your credibility in court. So that's very, very important, especially if we're going to RP court. 
<clears throat> excuse me. So that's the biggest thing, the most important thing. Then our status. Will this close this case? An active thing is like a bolo or something that uh, I'm writing an incident report. Suspect is at large. That's still active. Inactive would be something like I'm, uh, maybe not for this type of report, but, you know, I had to impound a vehicle that was disabled on the side of the road. That's inactive. That, that, that Nothing further will happen with that. And then the case is closed. In this case, I would say the case would be closed, even though we would turn him over to detectives for further uh, questioning and things like that. Technically, he admitted to everything, so that case would be closed. We could leave it active, though. I don't think these are overly important, but they're there, okay? Then the date, will you hit your little calendar here? And today's date, and then you just come out of that, and it'll leave it there. And then the observing officer is the officer who is writing the report, who made the arrest. And that matches the top. Okay, right here. That matches this observing unit. So this is like your signature on the report. Okay, like this says signature. Obviously, we don't have a signature like I'm writing it out. So I'm going to type it in as a digital signature. Now, over here, you will not have control over this. Only supervisors will or judges Let's say that I'm writing a warrant, and we're going to get into that in a minute. I will need a judge's signature before I can execute the warrant. So that's very important. That would be missing in this case. If this is my report, and I'm a patrol officer, a uh, trooper in this case, and I'm all done and I'm satisfied with how it's going to look, I am going to add the record because I can't change this. Supervisors will have access to this report, and then we will come back and we will sign when we are satisfied with it. We may have to have you change something or add something or say, um, you forgot to put in here that you read him his rights. Did you do that? Oh, yeah, of course I did as soon as I put him in the car. Okay, put that back into your narrative and then I'll approve it. Okay, so these reports are not approved until they have a supervisor's signature on them. And that is another duty of the um, shift sergeants and uh, shift commanders, lieutenants. Okay. Uh, call notes are, again, if there's, oh, no, I'm sorry. We're looking behind it again. Yeah, that's behind it. Um, if you'll notice this red line right here, that is the end of my report window. Once I've added the rec, everything behind under here is actually behind it. Again, uh, we want to remember that. So right here, um, we have a report with Tony committing some heinous crimes. I am not going to charge him with those today, so we're going to close it out. But otherwise, you would add your record, and then it would do that. It would go back to this screen. Okay, so that's an arrest report. We have a BOLO, a be on the lookout. You'll see these all look very, very similar. Okay. It's going to be an active BOLO. Okay. If I could, if I find the guy, and I do a record search, I can close it. But until he's found, this will stay active. Okay, so there's that. We have a warrant, which of course is very similar to the arrest report. It's a practically an arrest affidavit that uh, the only difference is we have not taken him in into custody. So we are asking the judge for the power to go and just snatch him off the street or from his home or something like that, based on the evidence that we have that he committed this crime. So that's a warrant in simple terms. General citation, um, things like um, drug possession or prostitution or um, carrying a concealed knife or something that I'm not going to put him in jail for. This would be a, a citation for those things, okay? This would be, you're getting a ticket, period. It's a ticketable crime that is not a traffic citation. There we go. That's what I meant. A vehicle citation is just that. It's a ticket 
Oh, here, this is what I'm looking for. Okay. On the tickets, you can, they could say, uh, you know, one of the, the three options, it, first is to pay the ticket at the fine. Okay. So here's the fine right here. Or you can request a court date by the date listed. And that's where the court date is. And then graphic court is always at one o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. So let's say that I, I'm going to do a month from today. That's what it was. It was the traffic. And I can put the court time at p.m. 1 o'clock p.m. See? So they have a court date if they so wish. And they just have to contact the court by that time. Okay? So that's under traffic citation. Traffic citations are pretty simple. You have the person. You have the vehicle. And then if, they're, if it's a speeding one, you have that. And if it's a running the red light or something, you would write it in here. And you would put your fine right here. Okay? So let's say it's a red light violation. Okay? Or something like that. Okay? So it doesn't always have to be speed. Um, but if it was, let's say they're going 72 in a 55. And my pace type was radar. Okay? And then they have a court date if they so desire and the fine. That's what it's under the traffic. Okay. So there you go. We have an arrest warrant, uh, uh, report, I should say. We have a be on the lookout. We have a warrant. So we're looking for an arrest warrant uh, or a search warrant. General citation are crimes where someone would get a ticket, um, usually marijuana or something like that. And then a vehicle citation. And the vehicle citation is actually the most comprehensive uh, one that we have at this time. Okay, so let's say that we have a report and um, you tell somebody, okay, now that report will be ready in 24 hours. You know, you're going to RP all that. Actually, it has to be approved by the supervisor. So the supervisor has files awaiting approval. He'll click on that and he's looking, somebody will say, well, it's a, uh, a license. The guy said his license is pending or something like that. We can go in there and then check all the licenses and so on. Okay. So that's, and obviously these are warrants and bolos and police records, which are the arrest reports. This is what I'm myself, one of the supervisors would be looking for to um, look to approve those if they're worthy of approval. Okay. So pretty neat system that we have here. Okay. Um, you know, we have notes, we can write notes and stuff, but, um, for the most part, you know, like I could make a note to myself, I think, you know, make sure that so-and-so does such and such. And, um, if you need to search a incident, you have the record ID on you, but you can search it that way. Or if you know the person, you can search it that way. Again, there won't be one because I didn't save it. But I'm going to search for Tony. We have a Tony. Um, let me go back. We have some records for Tony, but they're both licenses. Okay. All right. Oh, and his... Uh, he has a gun license here as well, okay? That's been approved. All right. Weapons license here. He has a weapons license. Where's his other? There it is. Okay. So his weapons license and his driver's license. Okay. Okay. This red line will get you every time because sometimes things are below it or it, or it jumps to just that or something like that. You have to roll. Okay, everybody. So if he had a report in here, this is where it would be. It would be under here. And there isn't any. Okay. So just like that, we have reports. So not only can we look somebody up, see if they have the valid information, especially with traffic stuff, but now we can arrest people for crimes. Once the crimes are populating the this box right here, charges, then you'll have a drop down of every crime. But right now it's just those. 
and then your felony misdemeanor and so on. So um, let's say that I want uh, battery, okay? And then my charge type is going to be misdemeanor battery, one count. I'll have the code. Bond type is going to be cash bail. Jail time is none. Um, or, you know, like one month. Okay, and then the bond or the fine for battery is $250. There we go. See, we can do it manually, I guess. So there you go. But it'd be nice if we had all the drop downs. Anytime I've ever worked with this, uh, which I have a little bit, um, the drop downs were populated with everything. But it's nice to know we can add them in if we need to. All right. So there we go. Again, we don't want to charge anybody. No, I never did put anybody. I don't want to accidentally give somebody a battery charge. All right, so there you go. You have um, the ability to write reports. Um, so this is now live. This is now part of Breast Cancer Awareness uh, Role Play and uh, the BCARP. And um, we will no longer be using RocketCAD. So there you go. All right. So until next time, I hope everybody's well. We'll see you. We'll talk about dispatch and we'll continue to have more fun in uh, this CAD and the BCA RP. Take care, everybody.